Hi there. I'm so happy to be able to share this very special book with you today. I'm going to read one story from this book today and one story tomorrow. And my teacher, Nancy Heckinger at um, ITP, which is a interactive telecommunications program at NYU. Um, that was where I went for my master's. And we spent a lot of time talking together, her and I, about museum design, interaction design, people, what does it mean? Everything, everything I could possibly imagine. Nancy listened to me. She was so patient with me. She was such a wonderful teacher and is such a wonderful teacher. In any case, she shared two stories from this book with me, which I feel like it took a really long time for it to land for me. But the essence of these stories are really about, for this particular story, Fatima, the spinner and the tent, is really about how you handle adversity and how our difficulties are meant to grow us. How our difficulties are meant to grow us. Okay, so that's pretty deep. And I'm going to share the story. I hope you enjoy it as much as I love it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will read a little bit of the story. I might stop in the middle. I don't know because I'm just playing with this and we'll see. But really, I just want to share the story of Fatima, the spinner in the tent. It's only three pages. So it's a three page story. I'm going to start. And I'll add my own little bits and bobs just to make it more interesting. Once upon a time in a city in the farthest west, there lived a girl called Fatima. She was the daughter of a prosperous spinner. One day, her father said to her, come daughter, we're going on a journey. For I have business in the islands of the Middle Sea. Perhaps you may find some handsome youth in a good situation whom you could take as husband. They set off and traveled from island to island, the father doing his trading, while Fatima dreamt of the husband who might soon be hers. One day, however, they were on the way to Crete when a storm blew up and the ship was wrecked. Fatima, only half conscious, was cast up on the seashore near Alexandria. Her father was dead and she was utterly destitute. She could only remember dimly her life until then, for her experience of the shipwreck and her exposure in the sea had utterly exhausted her. While she was wandering on the sands, a family of cloth makers found her. Although they were poor, they took her into their humble home and taught her their craft. Thus it was that she made a second life for herself. Within a year or two, she was happy and reconciled to her lot. But one day, as she was on the seashore, for some reason, a band of slave traders landed and carried her along with other captives away with them. Wow, so this is the second big thing that's happened. Her, Although she was bitterly... Although she bitterly lamented her lot, Fatima found no sympathy from the slavers who took her to Istanbul and sold her as a slave. Her world had collapsed for the second time. Now it chanced that there were few buyers at the market. One of them was a man who was looking for slaves to work in his wood yard, where he made masts for ships. When he saw the dejection of the unfortunate Fatima, he decided to buy her, thinking that in this way, at least, he might be able to give her a slightly better life than if she were bought by someone else. He took Fatima to his home, intending to make her a serving maid for his wife. When he arrived at the house, however, he found he had lost all his money in a cargo, which had been captured by pirates. He could not afford workers, so he, Fatima, and his wife were left alone to work at the heavy labor of making masks. Fatima, grateful to her employer for rescuing her, worked so hard and so well that he gave her freedom, and she became his trusted helper. 
Thus it was that she became comparatively happy in her third career. One day he said to her, Fatima, I want you to go with a cargo of ships masts to Java as my agent and be sure that you sell them at a profit. She set off, but when the ship was off the coast of China, a typhoon swept in and wrecked it. And Fatima found herself again cast up on the seashore of a strange land. Once again, I have goosebumps actually. Once again, she wept bitterly for she felt that nothing in her life was working in accordance with expectation. Whenever things seemed to be going well, Something came and destroyed all her hopes. Why is it, she cried out for the third time, that whenever I try to do something, it comes to grief? Why should so many unfortunate things happen to me? But there was no answer. So she picked herself up from the sand and started to walk inland. Now it so happened that nobody in China had heard of Fatima or knew anything of her troubles. But there was a legend that a certain stranger, a woman, would one day arrive there and that she would be able to make a tent for the emperor. And since there was as yet nobody in China who could make tents, everyone looked upon the fulfillment of this prediction with the liveliest anticipation. In order to make sure that the stranger, when she arrived, would not be missed, successive emperors of China had followed the custom of sending heralds once a year to all the towns and villages of the land, asking for any foreign woman to be produced at court. When Fatima, again, I have goosebumps, <laughs> when Fatima stumbled into a town by the Chinese seashore, it was one such occasion. The people spoke to her through an interpreter and explained that she would have to go to see the emperor. Lady, said the emperor, when Fatima was brought before him, can you make a tent? I think so, said Fatima. She asked for rope, but there was none to be had. So she remembered her time as a spinner. She collected flax and made ropes. Then she asked for stout cloth, but the Chinese had none of the kind which she needed. So drawing on her experience with the weavers of Alexandria, she made some stout tent cloth. Then she found that she needed tent poles, but there were none in China. So Fatima remembering how she had been trained by the wood fashioner of Istanbul, cunningly made stout tent poles. When these were ready, she racked her brains for the memory of all the tents she had seen in her travels, and lo, a tent was made. Amazing, right? She made the tent. When this wonder was revealed to the emperor of China, he offered Fatima the fulfillment of any wish she cared to name. She chose to settle in China, where she married a handsome prince and where she remained in happiness, surrounded by her children until the end of her days. It was through these adventures that Fatima realized that what had appeared to be an unpleasant experience at the time turned out to be an essential part of the making of her ultimate happiness. Well, how's that story for you? What did you learn in hearing the story? I mean, really, in the Tales of the Dervishes, so many beautiful short stories. This particular one, just a story of adversity, overcoming adversity and using the lessons of that difficulty. So at the end, it says, this story is well known in Greek folklore, many of whose contemporary motifs feature dervishes and their legends. The version cited here is attributed to the Sheikh 
Mohammed Jamaluddin of Adrianopoli. He founded the Jamalia Order, the Beautiful. It's also known as the Beautiful, and died in 1750. So that was the story of Fatima, the spinner and the tent, a story of a woman who went through many experiences of adversity and how in every situation she was put, she learned something new. She learned new lessons or new skills. And she was able to bring that with her and found herself in a situation where she was able to bring her gifts to the world. Thank you so much. What is some of the difficulty or the adversity that you have learned from? I know that for me, I am still constantly learning <laughs> from all the situations that I'm being placed in. And mining the lessons. But that's for another day. So that was my story, Fatima, Spinner in the Tent, from the book, The Tales of the Dervishes. Thank you so much.